old and with the new. All right. So look, it's that time of year again, right? Time to do fall maintenance. Rooftop units. These are yours. But the process is going to be similar no matter what your unit is. A lot of people think that doing a maintenance just means running through and changing all the filters and making sure all the belts look good and uh, maybe turn it on and make sure it works. If it's running, make sure it works good. No, that's not right. So look, about 12 units up here. It shouldn't take you no more than about two hours once you get up to speed, maybe two and a half. Um, and you're not gonna build this jack by the time of material. This is per unit, okay? So the faster you get, the more money you make and the faster you can get to your next job, son. Uh, don't cheat yourself by doing things time of material when you get really fast. But um, don't sacrifice quality for speed. Speed comes with repetition and experience. So, how would I say to approach doing all these units to get out of here in a reasonable amount of time and do a top-notch job? A lot of people want to come through and change all the filters and uh, turn everything off and check all the belts and everything real quick. I recommend don't turn anything off. Go around to all of the control cabinets and check and make sure you're not getting some kind of an error code. If you turn all the units off, when you turn it back on, it's not gonna be giving you that code unless you're looking right at the circuit board when you turn it on. A lot of units will flash that code to you one time. It'll tell you what the last problem was. If you're just running around turning them all off and turning them on, you're going to miss things. So this is a newer style unit. It's just a few years newer. And um, I'm going to make a little side note about this one. These VFD controllers, don't worry about that. That's not even hooked up. I'm going to show you that in a minute. But if you don't go around and check all of the error codes and all you do is check the heat, you may miss one that's giving you a code that tells you that we have a compressor that's entirely out of charge. So, uh, I love it when they're totally out of charge because it shouldn't take no more than about 10 minutes to find it. But we'll get on with that uh, later on. We'll let them know what they need to do here. But hey, just a little thing about looking for leaks. This is gonna sound strange now. I know you got fancy electronic leak detectors. But one of the first things you should see here is this really shiny and this isn't moisture because it hasn't been the drains fine this is oily rust and uh, if you look real close at that spider web there <laughs> this is just a little sometimes you get real tiny leaks I look and I'll sometimes see a spider web and you can see now there's like little tiny globules in there and that's that vaporized oil that got caught in that spider web uh, water doesn't do it um, but anyway hey you'll find your own little tricks to help you find leaks back to the maintenance so after you go around and you check in you make sure and make a note of anything that does have a code then if you want to start turning things off check all your belts pull all your filters put all your new filters in that's a good next step. I actually suggest, before you go into all that, the ones that are running, and do a full inspection, okay? These units need a full inspection of the heat area. And if you'll do this full inspection while the unit's running, then you, you've um, you've checked out the operation and given it visual inspection at the same time as opposed to going around looking at them all and then going around and turning them all back on one by one 
waiting for time delays, running up and down the stairs, using jumper wires, trying to make the units work. You may, just doing a quick visual inspection of every unit, five of them might be running already. That's gonna save you a lot of time. Though. The ones that aren't running, before we're done, we're gonna jump those out and make sure they're running. But um, these heat exchangers, especially on these York units, any unit, this is the meat and potatoes of what uh, you're here for. You're here to make sure that people are gonna be safe this winter. So, of course you're gonna use a combustion analyzer and check your gas, make sure you got the right mixture. But you know, this is a rooftop unit and it's a little bit different. You can access a lot more and there's more to look at. This, this part right here, this rots out fairly, you know, regular. Wherever this air switch hooks on, no matter what kind of unit you're working on, I didn't say yank it around, give it a little wiggle, give it a little wiggle, or maybe just scratch it just a tiny bit with your screwdriver anywhere where it looks like it might be weak okay if you punch a hole through there it was going to happen midwinter okay i didn't say punch holes in it i said test anything that's weak and if it goes through order new stuff even if it's a rooftop unit you know that if that leaks there's not going to be any carbon monoxide that goes down into the building but if this is leaking it constitutes the same thing and should be treated the same way as a cracked heat exchanger. Turn the unit off until it's fixed. How do you know that some of this is going to get sucked through the casing? Okay, don't take chances with your license or with people's lives. So, filters. Filters is generally the easy part. You got that arrow on there goes in the direction of the air, but the most important part of changing filters is just making sure that you change them. If you put it in backwards nine out of 10 times, that's not gonna be a big deal. Belts, you can tighten belts. It takes time to tighten belts. And then uh, next time when you come and that A35 that you tightened up is now loose, you can't just put an A35 on there. So you wrote down it needs an A35 but you tightened it up because it was stretched. And now you come back with an 835 and now you got to readjust everything again. You know, the customer doesn't mind an extra 30 bucks if it means they're not going to have any trouble this winter. Do yourself a favor. And just, just go with a stack of new belts. Just go with a stack of new belts and tie your shoes. But look, let's take a couple looks at some bad belts, okay? This is from another spot, all right? Whoa, you're letting your belt get this bad. You waited way too long. If you look at some of these belts, and they, they actually don't look too bad. But if you flex them, you see they have, how they have cracks, okay? Now, this more than likely is one that was like the next one I'm gonna show you. I will adjust a couple belts if they're fairly new. If I know that they were just put in on the last maintenance, I don't mind giving them one adjustment next season. But if you keep adjusting it, all you're asking for is for it to eventually snap. And it's gonna happen on a Saturday night or a Sunday when you're somewhere. Uh, it's gonna happen during something important. So that's what you're here for right now. There's no better time than now. But um, this belt right here, uh, that's about the worst as I like to get. let it get. And, and you can't even really, you can't even really see the cracks in it yet. You really have to flex it a lot. Okay, now that would have been one that got tightened up last time. And it's out of there this time. It's going to be a brand new. But if you're changing seven out of ten belts and, and putting the best belts on with the right tension, you should have a winner with no trouble. Once your filters and your belts are good, you know you didn't have any error codes or you've looked at what you thought might have caused error codes, you go around and you inspect all of these burners, you inspect all the parts. Now we're gonna turn them all on one by one, the ones that weren't running when we got started. And we're gonna check them out. 
when you do these belts, it's important to take a look at the actual blower bearings and the power off. Not on this one, I don't. I better not stick my hand in there. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to stick my hand in there. It's that easy to turn it off. Remember that. In here are going to be rubber bushings around these bearings. You should get your fingers to the back side of these rubber bushings and try and determine how much wear there is. Because when that rubber bushing in there lets loose, that's going to be what causes the bearing to shift, everything to start riding crooked, and, and the blower cage, probably everything starts to come apart. So don't just change the belts. Don't just check the bearings for noise. Don't just grease the motor. Check the grommets around there, around your bearings. Check your actual bearings, the rubber grommet. If that grommet is starting to wear, at least make a note of it, okay? Because that's what we're here for, is to let people know what might happen and to prevent anything that can. Now, uh, one more thing. This, the older style, the older style unit of these Yorks just has a, uh, a regular three horsepower or a five horsepower blower motor, depending on the size of the unit, and a contactor that turns it on. But these new units, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this and, and add it in, all right? These new units, this right here, like I said, this is an Indian. These new units have a variable speed air drive. And when you open them up, if it's got a variable speed air drive in it, you come to a roof, and you see there's three different generations of the same brand, don't assume that they all work the same. They make upgrades on these things. And these newer ones come with these variable speed drives. Now, I'll tell you a story about this one here and some others that have gone the same way in the next little shot that I'm making. But that's it. Oh, hold on, I'm forgetting the most important part. It's the one that a lot of people skip. You changed your belts, you changed your filters, you looked at the burn, you watched it, you made sure it was working good, you checked it for error codes, loose connections, burnt wires, rust, too much corrosion. Come around to the back side of the unit. Most units are gonna have an access for here. So that parametric relief dampers and stuff like that can get mounted. It's also for side discharge in case you don't want to go down. Take advantage of these to get in here and really take a look at your heat exchanger. Just because it's burning good doesn't mean it's gonna be burning good three months from now. Of particular note, these seams, these welded seams, Make sure you get a good light and look at every single unit on this roof, every heat exchanger, the underside of the elbows and these seams. Up here, you got a big welded seam that goes all the way down. Very common for those to have holes in them. If it's got even the smallest little hole, you can feel bad for your customer. Uh, what are you supposed to do about that? Hurry up and order on the new one, give them a fair price on it, and get it done. Do not just leave it run for a day or two while we figure out what we're going to do. Carbon monoxide is no toy to play with, ever, okay? Um, and if you're out there working for somebody else and they tell you to do that before you leave the job, do what you know is best. Go back to the shop, explain to your boss why you did that, Tell him to go turn it back on. If that conversation doesn't go right, there's a dozen more people that are gonna hire you. Don't even worry about it. That's it. Shouldn't take you all day. New belts, new filters, check it out for proper operation and look for all the little uh, tricky things 